Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to talk about the recent sanctions imposed on Russia and Kalashnikov concerned by the Obama administration. A lot of you guys have emailed me and, and asked me, what do I think of this? And I think you probably already know. I think it's horrible. I think it sucks. And I think it makes absolutely no sense. But what the Obama administration has done is, in essence, a backdoor gun grab. They've banned the importation of all AK-type rifles coming out of Russia. That includes Segas and Vepers. Now, Will that also reach a little bit more broadly and perhaps prevent the importation of some of the Russian-made steel-cased ammunition that feeds our beloved AK rifles? And the answer to that is, is I don't know. Uh, there seems to be uh, some ties to Tula. Actually, Kalashnikov Concern has, uh, has, has some offices in Tula, Russia itself, which is, of course, the same place where Tula ammunition is manufactured. So does that mean they're related? I don't know. But there's a lot of panic. There's a lot of scuttlebutt going on right now. There's some reps out there that are telling people on the phone that it's also going to affect Tula ammunition and maybe some others. So basically what the sanctions have done is has stopped the importation of rifles and has banned the importation of any other products from companies that have any interests, and that's a quote from the sanctions themselves, any interests with Kalashnikov concern. So I have no idea how broad reaching those sanctions may be. But what we do know for the time being is there's a tremendous run on rifles such as this SGL. Uh, this is an SGL 2194 with the side folding stock. I do have a parabellum armament top cover on this thing. Uh, I've had this rifle for a long time, but of course there's a run on these things. They went up in price pretty much overnight after those sanctions were, were announced. Um, and the same thing with the Vepers. The Vepers are drying up everywhere. Uh, the shotguns, the 12-gauge shotguns, they're affected. The Segas and the Vepers, they're drying up everywhere. Prices are skyrocketing on places like Gunbroker. Um, I, I'd like to say I wish you guys wouldn't do that, but I mean it's supply and demand. These things just got shut off. Now, what does that mean in the long term? Does that mean that we'll never see them again? And I honestly can't answer that question, guys. I wish I could. I wish I had that crystal ball and I could tell you where this is all going to end. But what I can say is through executive orders, which is what Obama did, he used an executive order to impose these sanctions. In the past, same executive orders are what were used to ban the importation of Chinese firearms and ammunition. And here we are in 2014, and we still don't have them. So I seriously doubt, just my opinion, it's, it's my opinion that we'll probably not see the reimportation of Russian-made rifles until Obama is out of office. We've got a couple more years there. If we get Hillary in, even Mitt Romney, who knows what they'll do. They may not lift those sanctions um, or, or rescind those executive orders. We just simply don't know. So I'm very fortunate. I'm not going to run out and buy any AKs at panic prices. I'm not going to sell my AKs at panic prices. I'm just going to hold on to them. But also know that there's other rifles out there, guys. Yes, the Russians make some great AKs. They're my preferred manufacturer of, of AKs and have been for years. But the Bulgarians make an AK that's every bit as good, and they're still importable. Arsenal is still bringing in AKs. You're still going to be able to get them. They offer the SAM-7s, which are machine receiver. They're outstanding rifles. They also have the stamped guns, the SLRs that are stamped, that are very much like like this Sega that you see here, which is an old Arsenal brand. This is when they were still uh, building rifles on Russian receivers and stuff. So there's going to be plenty of options out there. Plus, the U.S. manufacturers have really stepped up their game. A lot of companies, including companies like Rifle Dynamics, are manufacturing as many parts as they possibly can here in the U.S., and the quality of those parts continues to increase. With the shortage of Russian rifles, I can imagine only that that will improve. We'll see more U.S. companies building more U.S. Quali or high quality U.S. made AKs in the future. We also still have the Wasser 10s coming in. You know, they're not the highest quality AKs, but they work very good. I have a couple of them. They run just fine. They can be cleaned up to be really, really pretty. So anyway, don't panic. AKs are still available. Yes, the Russians are cut off for now. They're still out there. You're going to have to pay a premium for them, sadly. Uh, hopefully, we'll see that change at some point in the future. I don't recommend you go out and buy one of these things at three, four, five times their price, though, because those sanctions could go away tomorrow. They're sanctions, you know, so it's not, it's not a law that's passed to ban their importations. It's just an executive order to impose sanctions. Perhaps when the Russians pull out of Ukraine, should they ever... Maybe they'll go away. I don't know. Again, I don't have that crystal ball. So anyway, guys, I'm going to do a little bit of shooting. I'll roll in some B-roll. These fine rifles being shot. I also brought out an SGL-31. I also brought out my Arsenal underfolder. And uh, we'll let you guys take a look at some of these beautiful rifles in action. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, you can ask those questions on our Facebook page. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash military arms. Also, please swing by and check us out on Copper Custom. That's at coppercustom.com. Talk to you guys soon.